Woolly Mammoth It is said that the woolly mammoth has been extinct for at least 10,000 years. The victim of unrelenting hunting by our human ancestors and the dramatic climate change in their habitats, the colossal creature that once stretched across the globe was lost forever. However, many people believe that the specimen lived for many more years than it's thought, and some even dare to assume that they are still roaming around in the most remote areas of the world. One of the earliest accounts contradicting the official scientific viewpoint comes from 6th century China. The story tells of a group of hunters who encountered the great elephant while roaming the wilderness in the north. According to them, the elephant was more prominent than others they had seen before, and it also had long black hair. Many other sightings would be recorded over the following centuries, some of them occurring in American territory, where elephants have never inhabited. In 1567, a British explorer named David Ingram claimed to have seen elephant-like hairy creatures in what is now Canadian territory. David Thompson, a famous British-Canadian explorer, is said to have encountered footprints of an enormous creature during an expedition in 1797. The discovery occurred after being told repeatedly by the locals about a mysterious hairy creature that inhabited the most remote locations in northern Canada. In 1899, a popular magazine ran an article by a man named Henry Tuchman who claimed to have killed the last living mammoth in the Alaskan wilderness. He claimed that while showing natives some pictures and drawings of the great game he had hunted in Africa, a man interrupted him as he displayed the image of an elephant. The local told Tuchman that he had seen a creature just like that right there in Alaska. Fascinated by the possibilities, Tuchman gathered a hunting party and tracked the enormous behemoth. After laying a trap, the hunter claimed to have slain the mammoth, after which he donated the remains to the Smithsonian Institution. We might never know with absolute certainty whether there is some truth to these stories, or if they are all elaborate hoaxes. However, as many scientists rush to discredit any account claiming mammoths are still alive, supposed sightings continue to surface every day in the most inhospitable and remote reaches of the Earth. Thylacine the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, was a daunting and unique creature considered by the scientific community to be completely extinct. Despite its official status, numerous claims, sightings, and amateur footage have surfaced recently, assuring the beasts are still around. The thylacine had a peculiar look. The uniqueness of its aspect can be noted just in the way the beast was named. For some, it was a tiger, as its striped lower back had striking similarities with the patterns found on the giant felines, and its enormous jaw also resembled one. However, other people knew the animal as a Tasmanian wolf, due to the striking likeness to Canada species like dogs, wolves, and hyenas. In reality, the thylacine was neither a feline nor a canine. It was actually a marsupial, the largest carnivorous marsupial ever recorded in human history. Like most other marsupial species, thylacine originates from Australia. Still, it could also be found in the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. Despite its dog-like features, the thylacine had evident marsupial characteristics, such as an abdominal pouch and a stiff tail similar to the ones displayed by a kangaroo. After decades of being an endangered species, the last known thylacine perished on September 7, 1936 in Hobart Zoo, Australia. It had been captured just six years before, in a time when the species was already becoming rare. The extinction was a colossal tragedy for biologists worldwide, who had been pleading with world governments to officially protect the thylacine before it was too late. Unfortunately, during the 1920s, wildlife preservation was not a priority for many nations. Lately, after several people claimed to have seen specimens of the thylacine, some nature enthusiasts have become enthralled with the possibility of seeing one of the magnificent creatures alive. From 1936 to 2017, there have been almost 300 registered thylacine sightings in Australia. Some have turned out to be clearly faked or elaborate hoaxes. However, some claims were made by reputable researchers. In 1982, a scientist with the Tasmania Parks and Wildlife Services, Hans Narding, observed what he believed to be a thylacine. The sighting resulted in a massive, year-long, government-funded expedition to search for the creature. With the recent ubiquity of recording devices, an increasing amount of alleged thylacine sightings have been recorded on videos and still images. Yet, despite all the footage, 
the Australian government claims that the videos depict no more than domestic dogs. Still, some of the individuals making the claims believe the government is covering up the existence of thylacines to avoid hurting the logging industry where the marsupials lived. Passenger Pigeon Once considered the most abundant bird species in the entire world, with a population of close to 5 billion specimens by the start of the 19th century, the passenger pigeon went utterly extinct in less than a hundred years. According to some nature researchers from the time, seeing a forest invaded by a flock of perching passenger pigeons was a remarkable and intimidating sight. Today, stories and writings about passenger pigeons seem like fantasy tales. There are reports of flocks so massive that they would block out the sun, darkening entire towns. When these vast groups of birds would land to perch on trees, their numbers were so outrageously high that the branches would snap. Some smaller forests would not even have enough trees to provide resting space for the flock, forcing the birds to perch on top of each other and hindering the trees. The truth is that these pigeons' primary defense mechanism against predators was their overwhelming numbers. Similar to the behavior of wildebeest, who rely on their massive herds to ensure safe passage through the savanna, passenger pigeons flew in flocks to guarantee that most of them would migrate safely from the northern part of the U.S. to the Gulf of Mexico. Alas, their main strength would ultimately become their downfall. As more human settlements spread across America, settlers started to cut down forests to make farmland space. The birds would arrive at these locations, searching for their usual forest seeds and berries, and would find the crops instead. As passenger pigeons ruined the farms, they became the target for ranchers who began to eradicate them as a pest. Soon, the farmers would also realize that the pigeons were actually a delicious food source for humans. Thus, an entire hunting industry was born. Believing their numbers to be so great that no amount of hunting could hurt them, the birds were brought down by the thousands. At first, it was very easy to use a shotgun to hit several pigeons simultaneously. However, soon hunters got creative and began to use fire, smoke, and even poisonous gas to incapacitate them. Within a few decades, the great passenger pigeon flocks became a thing of the past, and the birds became an easy target for predators. Then, as they were going extinct, humans started to capture them and send them to zoos. By 1914, Martha, the last known passenger pigeon, died in captivity, and the species became officially extinct. Still, since their disappearance, hundreds of alleged sightings have surfaced across North America. The alleged sightings have yet to be confirmed by the authorities. However, it is said that the passenger pigeon might soon return to the skies of America. An unprecedented scientific effort has been taking place since 2012, and if it succeeds, the passenger pigeon will be the first species of extinct birds to be cloned back to life and released back into the wild. Honshu Wolf the Honshu Wolf has become almost a mythical creature in Japan. While visiting many of Japan's holy temples in ancient cities, it is frequent to stumble upon statues of mighty-looking wolves protecting the ancient ruins. The Honshu Wolf shared many similarities with other wolf species across the globe, but was darker and smaller than its western counterparts. Its main characteristics were its short legs and large head that gave it its unique appearance. Many ancient writings also depict the Japanese wolf as a legendary messenger of the kami, or divine spirits. The wolves were servants of Yamo no Kami, the heart of the mountain. Along with their master, Honshu wolves were tasked with protecting the mountains and hills of Japan. In reality, the now extinct wolves were capable hunters and predators, and in a practical sense, they did not provide protection against crop raiders such as the wild boar and deer. Unfortunately, they were also known to attack human settlements, which caused the systematic extermination of the species. Nevertheless, human hunters were not the only reason the revered wolves disappeared. After Japan opened up for world trade during the latter half of the 19th century, many of the once secluded species were suddenly exposed to foreign illnesses. For the Honshu wolf, the introduction of rabies and canine distemper to Japan led to the devastation of the population in a relatively short time. On January 23, 1905, at Washikaguchi of Higashi Yoshino Village in Honshu Nara Prefecture, Japan, the last Honshu wolf was captured and put down, officially rendering the species extinct before the scientific community. Since then, there have been countless reports of Honshu wolf sightings. 
One of the accounts from 2018 was so authentic that leading biologists all but confirmed the sighting must have been a Honshu wolf. But despite rigorous government-backed search efforts, the reappearance of the mythical wolf hasn't been demonstrated. In one peculiar account, several individuals closely witnessed the remains of a wolf-like creature in a Japanese forest. The authorities were not convinced it could be a Honshu wolf, and they quickly suggested it might have been a Eurasian wolf that fled from a mobile zoo four or five days before the sighting. However, a zoo worker that examined the corpse stated that it didn't look anything like the wolf that had escaped from the zoo. Macaulay Mbembe Deep within the lush and impenetrable jungles of the Congo dwell several elusive creatures whose sporadic sightings have shocked the world. The jungle's inaccessibility has fueled the notion that there might be countless exotic animal species that have never been seen by humankind, and some accounts have taken this idea to a whole new level by claiming that there are still living dinosaurs roaming amid the swamps and rivers of the jungle. Specifically, a giant, semi-aquatic, elephant-sized, long-necked creature named Makole Mbembe. The first report of the Makole Mbembe came in 1909 by acclaimed explorer and big game hunter Carl Hagenbeck. The explorer spent his life hunting and capturing wild exotic animals, and wrote in his book Beasts and Men, quote, Some years ago I received reports of the existence of an immense and wholly unknown animal said to inhabit the interior of Rhodesia. In the depths of the great swamps there dwelt a huge monster, half elephant, half dragon. It seems to me it can only be some kind of dinosaur, seemingly akin to the Brontosaurus. Hagenbeck was a respectable man, and his statement was taken very seriously, so much so that the Washington Post published a headline that read, Brontosaurus Still Lives. After that, reports of dinosaur-like creatures began to appear very frequently throughout the African continent. Curiously, the jungles of the Congo were a hotspot for such sightings and claims. German Captain Ludwig Freiherr von Stein zu Lautznitz, a famed explorer and adventurer, described a creature feared by many communities neighboring the swamps in the form of a brownish-gray animal with smooth skin. The creature was as big as an elephant, but with a long and stretchy neck. The locals described the beast as having a single horn, similar to that of a rhinoceros, and using it to attack anyone who dared get close. As the decades passed, more and more scientists agreed that the accounts of the Macaulay and Mbembe were probably groundless and based on rumors. Still, with little infrastructure, unstable governments, and limited funding, the jungles of the Congo are nearly as inaccessible today as they were in 1909, and many people still believe the fearsome Macaulay and Mbembe might be hiding there. Thank you for watching my video. Do you believe any of these creatures still roam the Earth? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And for more exciting content, please subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels, and make sure to hit the notification bell.